Good morning. Happy Wednesday. I don't see anyone on yet, so I'm just going to wait a few minutes and feel free to let me know if you're on. Um, and it will be great just to know that there's somebody here with me this morning. Um, if you end up watching this later at some point, um, just know that I'm already thinking and praying for you. So um, I'm glad that you could take the time uh, whenever that is to come and watch. So um, yes, good morning. So good morning, Lynn. Um, so it's great to see people um, come on here. And if you can't stay and need to finish later, that's totally okay too. Hi. Um, but it's really great to be um, with people this morning and um, or whenever you end up watching this. And so I'm just going to um, start by praying and then we'll see if some more people come on in the meantime. Um, but uh, yeah, let's just invite God um, to be with us this morning. Um, he already is, but sometimes it's nice to acknowledge and to, to ask him to come. So God, we just thank you for another day. We thank you for this Wednesday and for the intermittent sunshine. And God, we just thank you that we have uh, the opportunity to take some time out and to hear from you and your word. And so today I pray that our hearts would just be open to whatever it is that you desire us to hear. Um, and that God, you would uh, make yourself known to us deep in our hearts and Holy Spirit, we just invite you to come and transform us and to give us all that we need for today and the days ahead. We love you, God. Amen. And so uh, this morning, um, I have a few things that I wanted to share. And um, I think that sometimes I have so many things on my heart that it's hard to, to decide what to share. But one thing that um, I really did want to share this morning, uh, I think, is um, this idea of abiding in Jesus. And there, I know oftentimes we read verses about this, and there are some familiar ones as well. And I'm actually going to read one of those familiar ones right now. But we also hear that word abide with Jesus. And I don't think we always think about what that means. And, you know, I was thinking about like the root of that word, like a, an abode, which is, you know, a place, a dwelling place, a house or um, a place of residence is what that is. So if you're abiding in something, um, you're kind of it means that you're remaining in your you're staying in this place. And so when I read in scripture that it says to abide in Jesus um, and Jesus is saying to abide in him, um, I think. Wow, that idea of remaining in Jesus, finding our home in Jesus is so powerful and so, so difficult too, um, to even understand how do we do that? Um, what does that look like for our lives? Um, but I feel like God has been highlighting that to me lately, just the importance of recognizing our home in Jesus and how being rooted in that spot, having that be where our source of of comfort comes from, our source of safety and security. If you think of what a home is supposed to be, um, a place of, of growth, um, all of those things, um, to have that be found in Christ, in Jesus, above all other things, um, you can think of how, what a healthy place that is, what a, um, what a place where we can really grow and be transformed. And so, um, I just want to read one, um, before I read the famous abiding verses in John 15, I just want to point to um, some verse, a couple verses in John 7. It's John 7, 37 through 38. And when I was thinking and praying about this, um, these, these verses kind of came to me to begin with. And I love the fact that all throughout John, there is this theme of how Jesus is the one that fulfills us. Jesus is the one who is, he's the bread of life. Um, he is the water for us. He is the shepherd. Um, and so I'd encourage you to read John because I just feel like every time I read it, I'm just reminded of the importance of having that closeness and that um, ability to be so near to Jesus that we receive everything that God has for us. And so in John seven thirty seven. It says, um, so Jesus is shouting this actually to the crowds at this festival. And he says, anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. 
For the scriptures declare rivers of living water will flow from his heart. Um, and I think, wow, what a powerful statement. He's standing up saying, if you're thirsty, if you're longing for something, if you're in need, come to me. And I know I find myself in that place often lately. I don't know about you, um, but I, I have this, um, this need to uh, receive um, hope and encouragement and, and love and support. And it can be so easy to look in so many other places for that. Um, but Jesus says that if we are thirsty, if we're longing for this, Jesus is the one that provides that for us. Um, and so, and I love the part that says Riving, rivers of living water will flow from our hearts. Like as we go to Jesus to be filled and to receive this water, this living water, it actually fills us so much that it overflows. And I think for me, that's one of the most powerful parts about this because so often we can feel empty or feel like we don't have enough to give because we, um, whether we're tired or whether we just feel very broken or there's discouraging things and life is hard, um, especially right now, um, there's a lot of difficult things. But Jesus is saying that when we come to, to him, that we'll be so filled that actually that kind of life, that kind of love that comes from Jesus is going to just like flow out of us. Not something that we have to try to produce, but it's actually just going to come because we're going to be so filled with it ourselves. And I actually think this goes a lot uh, along a lot with um, Jeff's uh, little uh, devotional on Monday. Um, he's been talking about discipleship. And I've been thinking a lot about discipleship lately too. And um, just what that means, how we follow Jesus and how we are to live in this world as followers of Christ. And so I think that this is a key part of that. Um, and he may talk about this as well, just this idea of being so near to Jesus and being so filled with Jesus that we walk in uh, the lives that we walk, just show who Jesus is. And um, so people will ask us, what is different? What is it about our lives um, that makes us the way that we are? And so um, I love that because it's not dependent upon me. It's not dependent upon how I feel at any given time. And um, it's more about Jesus and it's more about what Jesus can do um, through me and what the Holy Spirit can do through me um, as I continue to to press into um, to, to God. And um, so as Jeff was saying on Monday, you know, our character is in line then with who Christ is. And so I think that that idea that our character can be built out of this um, closeness, this relationship with Jesus is really powerful. And so I want to read just the beginning of John 15, because I know many of us have heard these um, verses before. But again, I think it's a very key part of what allows us to be able to walk as Jesus followers in this world. And so um, Jesus is talking again here in John 15 and says, I am the true grapevine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so they will produce even more. You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. And there's that word that in other translations says abide. So abide, remain in me and I will abide or remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. And so this idea that we are to be connected to the vine, we are be, to be connected to the source of life, to Jesus, and that is how we produce fruit, um, is really important. And it may sound harsh in parts here because it also talks about pruning and cutting um, things off. But I think when you think about how people actually take care of, of vines and, and grapevines, you know, it's a, also a gentle process. It's a way of... Uh, growth. It's a way to help us grow more. So even as we abide and we remain in Jesus, you know, God prunes us in ways that are so important for how we are to grow. Um, and it's a it's a loving process. Um, it's it's a way that I think it means God cares for and um, understands what it takes to help us be the most fruitful people um, that we can be. And so, um, hi, hi, Rena. Good morning. My dad is on here as well. Good morning. Um, 
so yeah, so this idea of just abiding and being in that constant relationship, um, I think is really important. And, you know, when I think about discipleship and I think about walking with Christ, you know, it, it isn't always an easy thing to do. Um, and I feel like I've needed um, some extra encouragement in that area. And one of the things I've shared this with some people, but I really think without being legalistic about it, I actually really think that taking some time to actually sit in the presence of God and to read the word of God is key. <laughs> because if we are to know Christ, if we are to let his word seep into our hearts so that it does become living water for us and flows from us, we need to actually be reading it. We need to actually be absorbing it. And um, I know that that's not easy to do. And I know I've, I've mentioned that recently it's been, I've been able to find a little bit more time to do that. But with little kids, it's like crazy and it's very hard. Like if I could have an hour of time with God in the morning, that'd be awesome for me. I know not everyone would want to do that, but I would love that. But it's difficult to do with children or different schedules. Um, but I have found that when I take those moments, even if it's not a long time, just to read a verse or a piece of scripture that um, is an encouragement to me or a psalm, um, that sticks with me. And I think that it grows. Like I do feel like that plants something in our hearts that continues to grow and continues to um, speak to us throughout our day. And it makes it easier for us to approach God instead of going to other things when we're struggling, when we um, are in need, um, because I think we are really thirsty. And the only thing that can really satisfy us is Jesus. And so if we have Jesus's words in our hearts, um, we can constantly be filled with that. Um, and so for me, that's meant maybe taking a few moments to, to just sit in the presence of God or to, I've mentioned to some people, I have this, I this pray as you go app. I suggest you look it up if you want. It's a little bit more traditional format, but has it read they read a piece of scripture, there's some music at the beginning and it just gives some questions to think about to reflect on the scripture and that's been really great for me um, to be thinking about those things throughout the day and so there's a lot of different things that we can do I've also been reading divine hours when I can I know Justin's been sharing a lot about that um, on his Thursday devotional and those have been really great there's some amazing prayers in there that I feel like give words to the things in my heart that sometimes are hard to to articulate myself and so in all of these ways oh and worship music I mean that's an amazing way if you can't sit down and read. I've been playing that throughout my house in the mornings because I feel like it helps remind me where my rootedness is. Um, yeah, Lynn, it is a really great app. So yeah, I suggest looking that up. Um, so yeah, um, just having that um, place to be rooted in to start out our days is so important. And I think just the fact that those of you who are watching this now or in the future are taking the time to watch this um, and to sit here, that's that's doing something also. This is a devotional, a time and a space that you're carving out to receive from God. And so um, so be encouraged that you know, you're know you pressing in and I feel like God is really gonna honor that and really wants to um, you know uh, pour into you during those times. I think that when we make that time and give it to God, God honors that and God um, pours into us. And, um, you know, there's parts in scripture that talk about the word being written on our hearts. And it talks about how, you know, in, in, in Old Testament times, um, you know, people were having to follow all these rules and laws and but eventually God's word would be written on our hearts. And I think that's what Jesus is talking about here as well, like his words and the way that he lived. And as we absorb that, it becomes almost like it's written on our hearts. It becomes a part of who we are. And um, so uh, one other thing that I wanted to share here um, is, uh, well, where was it? Oh yeah. Uh, another part of John and it's John chapter 10 and I encourage you to read the whole passage but I'm just going to read um, one little part here because I think that this is key as well. Um, it's John 10 4 through 5 and it says um, let's see oh Jesus is talking about how he is the shepherd the good shepherd for us and um, it says after 
he's telling this parable to his people about being this shepherd. And it said, he tells them, after the shepherd has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them and they follow him because they know his voice. And they won't follow a stranger. They'll run from him because they don't know his voice. And so I was reminded of this passage because this idea, we so often I hear, how do I know um, that God's speaking to me? How can I hear God's voice? And I think Jesus is saying right here that if we are following Jesus, if we are learning his voice through reading his word, through absorbing just the truth about who God is, um, we recognize God's voice so much easier. And so, um, and then also I think there's a bit about discernment in here that says that, you know, if we are so in tune to Jesus's voice, then we will understand and know that other voices are not Jesus's, <laughs> you know, like that's not Jesus voice. So I'm not going to follow that. Like, I'm not going to follow a stranger's voice. I'm going to follow Jesus voice because Jesus is my shepherd. And so, um, all of these things to say that this idea of abiding and remaining in Jesus and putting our focus on him is a way that we can learn to hear God's voice, a way that we can be filled so that our lives overflow with who Jesus is and that we are able to just walk through life with a greater confidence in who God has created us to be. And I want to talk about that sometime as well, just that how this intimacy with Jesus also helps us to know our true identity. And that is such a key part in walking this faith life and to being um, true to who God says that we are so that we can um, be confident in walking in this life. So um, so that's just a little bit of what I had um, today. Um, I was intending on reading Psalm 86 when I first started looking at this and then felt like God had led me to this other thing. Um, but I think that even in Psalm 86, I'll just read one verse uh, or two verses. It says uh, 86 verse 4. Give um, or 3. 86 verse 3. Um, Be merciful to me, O Lord, for I am calling on you constantly. Give me happiness, O Lord, for I give myself to you. O Lord, you are so good, so ready to forgive, so full of an unfailing love for all who ask for your help. Um, and again, there, like, I'm calling on you constantly. Like, we have this posture where we are constantly calling on God, where we are asking him for the things that we need, understanding that God forgives us when we fall, when we fail, um, but being able to be uh, picked up again, knowing that we're giving all of ourselves to, to God. Um, and so, yeah, that God is so full of unfailing love for you. So when you come to him, God is ready to just pour out. And so I want to pray that over us this um, today, whenever you might be watching this. And so um, I know something we do at church often and other times is just to um, maybe put your hands actually physically out if you want to, um, because I think it's a, it, it's a posture that says, okay, I'm putting all of my body even in a posture to receive from you. So I just invite you to do that um, this morning as I pray over us. So Holy Spirit, I just invite you to come and to show us what it means to abide in you, to remain in you, to find our security, our comfort, our hope in you above all else. And Jesus, I pray that as we do that, we would um, become more aware of your voice, that you would give us the wisdom and discernment to be able to know what is your voice and what is the voice of the world that may not line up with always with what you are speaking to us. So I pray that we would learn your voice even better. Help us to find places to um, spend in your presence. And God, as we just um, put out our hands now, God, I pray that you would pour out your love so uh, much in our lives that it would overflow. Um, God, I, I ask in the places where we maybe feel broken or empty or um, not capable or maybe discouraged right now, God, that you would bring your, speak your truth and that you would pour out um, just all of your gifts in us and um, yeah, just the truth of who you say that we are. And while it might seem hard to, to walk as your disciple, God, you say that if we remain in you, we will bear much fruit. And so, God, I just pray for each person who hears this today, God, 
that you would bear fruit in their lives and that those that they come in contact with would just know that there's something different and that they would see that it is you that sustains them. Yeah. God, would you speak your truth through us and would you uh, pour out your love through us because of the overflow of what you're doing in our hearts? Amen. So, well, thank you for joining me this morning, and it's great to see those of you that have come on. Um, so thank you for being here. And for those of you who watch later, um, just know that I'm going to be praying today that whoever watches this morning would just receive um, more of the Holy Spirit, more of Jesus' love today, and that you would be encouraged and that you would be able to actually find some space in your lives to be able to sit in God's presence and to receive all that you need and to learn the voice of our, our Father, uh, God. And so... Have a blessed day, and I hope that we can be together soon. So goodbye and have a great day. Love you all. Bye.